Today I am cleaning my Husqvarna 372 XP. I'm going to start by cleaning in behind the side case. Clean around the clutch and drive sprocket. Maybe give the needle bearing a grease. First I'm going to scrape the majority of the gunk out with my toothbrush. Be careful not to push any of the dirt into the oiler. You don't want that clogged for the obvious reason that the chain and bar won't get any oil. Now I'm going to take the blow tool and blow out all the finer debris. Again, try not to push anything into that oiler. Now I'm going to give it a spray with some parts cleaner. Don't be too generous with this stuff. The non-chlorinated stuff will eat plastic. So make sure you wipe it away. Now I wouldn't do this deep of a cleaning every day, just periodically when I have the time at the shop. Now I'm just replacing one of the two bolts that holds the dogs on there. That had come loose and was nearly hitting the chain while I was cutting. Now I'm going to clean out the side case again with the toothbrush. Getting most of the gunk out of there. And another blow with the air tool. And some spray with the parts cleaner. Now I'm going to clean up the bar. This is a 24 inch bar. I normally run those or a 30 inch on my 372. I'm checking the sprocket to make sure it's free of debris. Now I'm going to scrape all the gunk out of the bar rails. For that I just use a thin piece of steel like the edge of my file gauge. The air tool works really good at pushing all the finer stuff out of there. Notice that I'm blowing the dirt away from the sprocket as to not push anything else into there. Now I'm checking the bar for burrs. As the bar wears, it gets a lip of steel along the edge of the bar. It might not seem like much, but it has a profound effect on the saw's ability to cut through wood. So I take a flat file and file away at it until it's smooth again. There's a couple different tools and techniques to doing this, but I prefer just using a flat file and rubbing in circular motions until it's smooth again. Whatever you use, make sure you're not filing too much and wearing grooves in the bar. There's a little hole at the bottom of the bar on either side that lines up with the oiler. Oil flows through this little hole and along the bar rail to lubricate the chain. So you want to make sure that hole is clear of debris. Now I'm going to grease the needle bearing that the clutch and dry sprocket spin on with my grease pen. It acts like a syringe to push grease down underneath the bearing. Now I'm going to throw the bar and chain back. It's good practice to flip your bar periodically. That way it wears evenly and you end up with less burrs. I'm taking care to make sure all the drivers go in the drive sprocket and into the bar rail. All the while keeping tension on the bar and chain to make sure that they don't come back out. Then I put the side case back on. 
and I back off the tensioner until it falls into the hole on the bar. Then I put the nuts on finger tight and tighten the chain until it has proper tension. When you're tensioning the chain, you don't want it too tight or too loose. You don't want it so tight that it stops spinning immediately once you let off the throttle. And you don't want it so loose that the drivers are hanging out of the bar. If you run a saw like that, the chain is just going to end up falling off. Now I'm going to take off the top and check the air filter and in around the carburetor. I always put the choke on before I take the air filter off. That closes the valve and won't allow any dirt into the carburetor. The air filter is pretty caked with sawdust, so I'm going to give it a good blow with the air tool. I always try to blow from the inside out as to not blow any dirt into the screen rather than off of it. That looks a little bit better. Now I'm going to take a clean rag and cover the intake hole while I blow out the sawdust around the carburetor. Again, I'm just trying to keep the dirt out of the carburetor. Now I'll put the air filter back on. Now I'm going to pull off the spark plug and have a look at it. It's a good idea to check the spark plug once in a while because it can tell you a lot about your saw. In the right conditions, the end of your spark plug should be a brownish coffee color. If it's dark or oily, it could be an indication that you're mixing too much oil in your saw gas. If the end is white, it could be an indication that the saw is running too lean. It should probably be looked at as that can be detrimental. A saw could be running lean because the carburetor isn't set right. Or maybe there's an air leak, like a crank seal gone. Lean saws will eventually overheat and cause costly damage like a scorched piston. The cost to repair such damage is often not much less than the price tag of a new saw. Now I'm going to remove and inspect the spark arrestor. The spark arrestor is essentially just a metal screen that prevents sparks from spitting out of the muffler. It's a safety feature for preventing forest fires. Sometimes they get gummed up with carbon, often because of too much oil in the saw gas. If your screen is clogged up, you're going to get a noticeable loss of power in your saw. My screen is looking pretty good. But since I got it out, I'm going to give it a spray of parts cleaner and blow it with the air tool anyways. You see the difference? Me either. Now I'm just going to pop it back in there. Now I'm just going to give the little bolt a spray of penetrant so it's not such a prick to get out next time. Now I'm going to take off the pull cord and clean in around the starter. The starter case is held on by four Torx bolts. It's 
actually dirtier than I expected it to be. I'll have to scrape at it with a toothbrush to break up the sawdust. That'll blow the rest of it out with the air tool. Might as well use up the rest of the can of that brake clean. Just remember that that stuff can potentially eat plastic parts. I'll just pop that back on there and call it done. So in conclusion, you're not going to do this kind of cleaning every day. But it's important to get into some sort of routine so that you're not neglecting the tools that help you make a living. 